Tim, you want to introduce? Yeah. Oh, so the, the next uh, presentation is uh, by Dr. Paragami. This is the new pass uh, score system that has been uh, developed from uh, the West Coast, uh, which uh, is uh, very useful when you are doing a drug trial in uh, acute pancreatitis specifically, and he's going to tell you the validation of this pass score in the apprentice consortium that has been formed in the last three, four years. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Pedram Paragomi. I'm a postdoc research associate from University of Pittsburgh. Um, the title of my presentation is Validation of Pancreatitis Activity Scoring System, uh, also known as PASS, in a multicenter international prospective cohort. It's an intercontinental study through Apprentice Consortium. A little background about PASS and the formation of this um, activity scoring system. Uh, while we have a number of um, prognostic tools and severity classification for acute pancreatitis, the need for a dynamic real-time activity scoring measure um, in acute pancreatitis field was needed. To this end, uh, the process to design a dynamic activity measure started. The first step was to identify uh, proper candidate variables. Therefore, systematic literature review and two rounds of modified Delphi meetings were conducted. Um, through um, and with uh, supervision of a panel of pancreas experts, numerous variables, clinical, lab, and also patient's description of symptoms uh, were listed, ranked, and weighted. And ultimately, the final score was presented in 2017. This five-component scoring model comprised of organ failure weighted by 100 for each system, oral uh, intolerance of all, uh, solid diet weighted by 40, systemic inflammatory response syndrome series weighted by 25 for each criterion, abdominal pain based on visual analog scale weighted by 5, and morphine equivalent dose meta score weighted by 5. There are two main publications on PASS so far. Initial introduction and presentation of PASS was published in 2017 by Dr. Wu and colleague based on retrospective assessment of data from five centers located in California. It was followed by the second publication by Dr. Boxbaum and colleagues, again from California, a single center prospective cohort study which studied and investigated the correlation between PASS score at different time points and clinical outcomes, both during length of stay at the hospital and after discharge during the follow-up course. Um, as I mentioned, both of these studies were conducted in California. One of them is a five cent based on five-center uh, data, and the other one is a single-center study. Therefore, we decided and uh, organized a study in order to address three main objectives. First, we wanted to run the first international intercontinental validation study of PASS. Second, we wanted to describe the trajectories and PASS trajectories, activity trajectories, based on different length of stay in the hospital. So we subclassified patients based on length of stay. And third, we wanted to investigate statistically compared the rate of change in activity score um, again, in the three length of stay subgroups, and also we wanted to address the difference, potential differences in pass score at discharge time point. To this aim, to reach this aim, Apprentice Consortium provided the optimal platform. Apprentice's acute pancreatitis patient registry to examine novel therapies in clinical experience. It's a multi-center prospective collaboration with 22 centers contributing to the first phase of this study. It's based on prospective enrollment of AP subjects uh, using unified inclusion-exclusion criteria. And data entry is through harmonized monitoring process and online data registry through REDCap. The project uh, was led by UPMC. And the enrollment period uh, for the first phase of this study was concluded in January 2018. 
as I mentioned, we subdivided the patients in three length of stay. We used length of stay as a key um, variable, and we subdivided to short, intermediate, and long length of stay. Less than three days in the hospital, between three to seven days in the hospital, and more than, more than seven days of hospital stay. A general demographics and disease profile in our total cohort, uh, mean age of 48. In our total cohort, 48% were female. Uh, about 50% were Caucasian, 80% were non-Hispanic, and mean BMI was 30. In terms of etiology, we have 35% biliary AP, 17% alcoholic pancreatitis, and in terms of severity, we have 67% mild, 24% moderate to severe, and around 9% severe acute pancreatitis, according to REC. In total, we had past calculable in 1,451 acute pancreatitis patients. We had around 5% short length of stay, 36% intermediate, and 58% patients in, long, in prolonged length of stay subgroup. When we compared the past trajectory in total cohort, admission pass in our total population was 120. Pass, as expected, dropped to uh, 100 at 24, and it followed a declining pattern to 48 hour and reached a score of 70, 75. So it started at 120, uh, 100, and at 48 hour, pass, median pass score was 75 in total apprentice cohort. When we subdivided the patients to three length of stay subgroups, we found this um, picture um, summarizing the trajectories of pass. So we have this main time points of this study starting from admission 24 48 72 hour and seven day from admission and on y-axis we have median pass score so as you can see red line depicts uh, long length of stay blue line intermediate and green line short length of stay subgroup we can see long length of stay subgroup started at the higher baseline and they follow a higher level of activity score at each subsequent time point what was more important for us in this was describing the pattern of change at each subsequent time point. So we calculated delta, which was subtracting each time point activity level from baseline score for each group. So as you can see, um, patients with prolonged length of stay had a higher activity level at baseline, and they followed a slower decline pattern. Whereas in patients with intermediate, and especially in short length of stay, we had a sharper decline in pass or activity level. Looking at the median activity scores at each time point, we had 125 on admission for prolonged length of stay and 115 for intermediate and short length of stay. What was interesting, uh, all three subgroups had consistent decline throughout study time points. In short length of stay, we noticed the sharpest decline among the three subsets dropping from 115 to 78 activity score at 24 hour, and at, tw at 48 hour, again, a de sharp decline from 78 to median score of 20. So within two days, based from baseline score of 115, activity level dropped significantly to 20. To statistically compare the trajectories and behavior of PASS among three length of stay subgroups, we used GEE model, and after adjustment for continents, we found a significant difference, and we established a significant difference among three length of stay subsets. With long length of stay subjects having 15 points per day, a slower rate of decline in PASS. Also, we did the point-by-point -point comparison between three length of stay subgroups, and we noticed at the three main study time points at 24, 48, and 72 hours, long length of stay subgroups had significantly higher activity level compared to our reference group, which were intermediate length of stay. Also, we did the um, investigation on discharge pass. In all subjects with um, calculable pass score at discharge, overall median score was zero. And when we compared patients in different length of stay subset, we noticed no significant difference in discharge pass among three subgroups. Taken together, the conclusions from this study, this study presented the first um, and largest prospective cohort using international data. 
when we compared length of stay subgroups, different length of stay subgroups, we noticed different past trajectories among um, three subsets. Long length of stay subjects have the slowest past decline over time. And when we compared discharge paths, median pass at discharge in total cohort was zero, and no significant difference among the three subsets was noticed in our, um, in our data set. At the end, I want to thank uh, all apprentice collaborators and also my mentor, Dr. Georgios Papacristo, for the guidance and support throughout this study. Thank you. So very well presented, extremely crisp presentation. And it's a, this pass score is very, very useful for drug trials because here now you have a number in the past, we used to talk about organ failure, pain, narcotic requirement, inability to eat, search score, etc. Now you create a score so you can compare patient population from institution to institution and then for the statistics and all this is an extremely, extremely important point. But what I want you young, bright people of tomorrow's gastroenterologists to know, they are all interdependent. One is dependent on the other. If you have pain, you will take narcotics. And if you have pain and you're taking narcotics, you won't be able to eat. And most of the people who are having pain and narcotics are not eating will have organ failure and they have automatically a high surge. So they're all very interdependent. So while the scores are very, very useful, and obviously for people who are having severe disease, the scores are not going to come down because you're only just summing up all the five things that we know normally, clinically, how we treat the patients. So there is a difference between the research and clinical practice. That's what I'm coming back and back again. So you have to also look at this particular thing too. And uh, while this is going to play a very important role in drug trials of acute pancreatitis in coming years, I have no doubt about it. But still, the clinical assessment of a patient is extremely important. So right in, in the first two days, you know who is going to stay for seven days. And uh, that's an important point still. But I'm sure many people may have some questions. Well, uh, there's a question. Did you look at the um, utility of pass on discharge as a predictor of readmission? Um, unfortunately, based on current apprentice data set, we, didn't, uh, we couldn't answer that question with relation to the follow-up events. Uh, we couldn't... Uh, but, but actually, uh, James Buxbaum actually presented the Red Journal paper. Yeah. So there they looked at the dismissal pass scores and readmission, and there is a good correlation. If they are dismissed with a higher pass score, there is a higher readmission. But that's also very intuitive. You know, when you have, uh, when people are having pain and they're not eating well and their search score is there and you have dismissed, that's when they have a high pass score. So you know already that they are going to be likely to be readmitted. George. Uh, pass score is very interesting. As you said, it's very important because it's an activity index. So a potential drug trials in the future can actually follow daily or even every 12 hours the activity of the disease. But better did not present this data yet. But there are shortcomings with pass score. There are a few issues with uh, pass score. We actually do this analysis right now. Stay tuned. I think Pedram has also a presentation at, uh, at DW in a few weeks. Uh, it's a good start, but there is room for improvement for sure. So th that's it. Shall we go to the next one?